Elena in a car moving at a constant speed of uh, 10 meters per second. So we have V equals to uh, 10 meters per second along the straight horizontal road uh, records the frequency of sound emitted uh, by a distant stationary source. Uh, so the source in this instance is stationary and the listener is the one in motion, right? Uh, the learner then repeats uh, the recording of the frequency of the sound when the uh, when the car travels at a new constant speed of 20 meters per second. So we have our V a new of uh, 20 uh, meters per second, so to say. The graph uh, below, not drawn to scale, is obtained from the results. Uh, on the y-axis, uh, you can see we have the recorded frequency. And then on the x-axis, we have the speed of the car. So let me uh, sketch what is going on. So this question is saying that um, this sound source is stationary. Uh, what is moving away is uh, the listener, right? On the first scenario, uh, the listener is moving away at a velocity of 10 meters uh, per second. And then on the second scenario, uh, the sound source still um, stationary, uh, but uh, the listener is now moving away at a speed of 20 uh, meters uh, per second. Uh, the first question says, um, uh, state the Doppler effect. Uh, this is the apparent change in observed frequency as a result of the relative motion between a sound source and an observer. Um, 6.2 uh, 6 says, uh, use the graph to answer the following question. And then um, 6.2, there we have it, 6.2.1. Uh, write down the frequency of the sound source emitted uh, by the stationary uh, source. So uh, the equation we have for Doppler effect is that uh, the frequency observed by the listener equals to uh, V plus or minus uh, VL uh, divided by V uh, plus or minus uh, VS uh, multiplied by frequency emitted by source. So for us, to find uh, the frequency uh, emitted uh, by the sound source uh, using this equation. We need the frequency observed by the listener to be equal to the frequency emitted by the sound source. Um, for us to obtain that using, the, uh, using this equation, uh, we need a VL here, the velocity of the listener, to be equal to the velocity of the sound source so that V and V can cancel out. And then at the end, we have FL equals to FS. Um, as far as uh, we know, uh, the, freak, uh, the, the the velocity of the sound source is zero, right? Because it's stationary. So we go to a graph and look at a point where the velocity of the listener or the car is zero, so that... Um, the frequency of the listener can be equal to the frequency of the sound source. And then if you look at the graph, uh, there's a green point there I'm making. That is where uh, we have zero and the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, we have uh, the frequency, uh, which is equal to uh, 700 hertz, right? So the frequency emitted by the stationary source uh, in this situation is 700 hertz. Uh, then the question, say, and then it goes on to say, uh, give a reason for your answer. Uh, the reason of the answer is that there's no relative motion between source and listener. They all have a velocity. So velocity of listener equals to velocity of source equals to zero meters per second. No relative motion between the two. So the Doppler effect uh, cannot take place or its effect is zero in this instance. Uh, let's move on to the next question. 6.2.2. Uh, in which direction is the car moving relative to the source? Choose from towards or away. Uh, give a reason uh, for the answer. Again, uh, we have to stick uh, to the graph we have. Uh, that's what the question requires of us. 
So at let's okay if when the velocity uh, is zero, uh, the frequency observed is seven hundred hertz. Uh, when the velocity is ten meters per second, uh, the frequency observed is seven hundred and seventy nine point one. So it seems like when the speed of the car is increasing. Uh, the frequency observed is going down. That only happens when a vehicle is moving away, right? Whether the sound source is moving away from the listener or the listener is moving away from the sound source. But then in this situation, we know very well that uh, the sound source is stationary. So the listener is the one moving away. So here uh, we'll write away. And then the reason for that is that uh, the frequency uh, observed is less than uh, the frequency emitted, right? Yes. Um, let's move ahead. 6.2.3. Uh, it says uh, calculate uh, the speed of sound in air. Okay. So what we're going to do, uh, we have the data for when the speed of the vehicle is 10 meters per second and when the speed of the vehicle is 20 meters per second. So we're going to pick one between the two and then we're going to use it uh, to find our um, the speed of the air. So again, uh, the first thing to do is to jot down the given information, right? So now we know that the frequency of the source is 700 hertz. So we're going to write that down. Uh, the velocity of A is our unknown, right? And uh, the velocity of the source is zero. Uh, so the velocity of the listener, now we have to pick one point uh, between the two. It said that we start with 10 or we start with 20. So let's pick 10. Uh, so there we have it, 10 meters per second. So on our Doppler effect, uh, we're going to have one missing variable which is the speed of sound in air and then from that is just uh, solving the math so let's go ahead and do that we have fl equals to v plus or minus vl divided by v plus or minus vs uh, multiplied by the frequency of source right um the frequency observed by the listener uh, when the when the speed of the car is 10 meters per second is 679.1 um, uh, which is equals to uh, this v is what we are interested in the speed of sound in m and then the velocity of the listener uh, because uh, the listener is moving away uh, we're supposed to have a minus on the numerator right if it was moving towards then we're going to have a plus so there we're going to have uh, v uh, minus 10 uh, divided by uh, the, velo the velocity of uh, sound in air and then um, the, the listener stationary so we're going to have plus or minus zero multiplied by frequency of source uh, frequency of source is 700 hertz so we're just going to have that there so if we write this nicely uh, we get 679.1 equals to v uh, minus 10 uh, divided by v multiply by 700 um, if I divide both sides uh, by 700 uh, I will get uh, 679.1 uh, divided by 700 uh, equals to V uh, minus 10 uh, divided by V uh, cross multiply I get 679.1 V um, equals to 700 uh, V uh, minus 700 uh, multiplied by 10. Uh, check uh, this uh, value here to the left hand side. I get um, 679.1 V minus 700 V equals to minus uh, 7000, right? Yeah, there we have it. Uh, so now I can take uh, V as a common factor. Uh, that will give me 679.1 minus 700 uh, equals to minus uh, 7000 and then V is thus equals to minus uh, 7000 uh, divided by 
uh, minus 700. Uh, let me put that in my calculator real quick. Um, it's taking a bit longer than I expected. Just give me a sec. So we have minus uh, 7000 uh, divided by uh, 679.1 minus 700. Uh, that is uh, 334. Uh, point, um, point nine, nine, three meters uh, per second. So yeah, that is what I'm getting. Um, so what I'll ask you guys to do is to use the other point, uh, when the velocity is 20 meters per second and see if you get the same thing. Um, this is a series of videos. Um, I've done question five, four, three, two from this question paper. So if you click on the channel, uh, you'll get all of that. Uh, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.